Start with the most basic things. How can one contract this virus as far as we know? As far as we know, most people will contract it via respiratory route. Uh, they will uh, get it on their hands and then uh, convey it to their uh, face to their mouth or their nose. Uh, that may also be spread through the air, but this is much less likely. I should say spread through the air uh, at a distance greater than three feet. Uh, this is air, considered aerosolized virus, and uh, we think it may have a component, but we haven't really proven that for this new virus infection. There's also some concern that it's spread by other routes, such as um, through uh, feces. But again, this is all uh, considered to be minor right now compared to the major respiratory and contact uh, route of spread. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of concern about this uh, when, when it was first identified down out in Wuhan, but I think it grew substantially when it showed up in northern Italy. And now, as I said, we have a case in Brazil. Is it surprising that it's popping up in various places? It doesn't surprise me. It, I think that it all started in Wuhan, but it, this virus spreads from person to person. So somebody may not even know that they were near uh, somebody who came from Wuhan or who came from Wuhan two people ago. So it, it, given this kind of virus, it's not a big surprise that it's spreading. The CDC yesterday said that we should be prepared for the real possibility. In fact, they said the certainty sooner or later that we'll have some communities exposed to this in the United States. Uh, what is the basis for them saying that? Is that your conclusion as well? We're going to have it here in some significant numbers? Yeah, I think it's very hard to keep respiratory viruses out. Uh, we, I think people are trying to do the best they can at doing this by quarantining people, identifying people who are at high risk for having the virus. But this is, if you have a virus that's going to be contagious when people just start developing symptoms, uh, it's very hard to know how to detect them and who you're going to screen. Um, it, so it's just difficult. We're doing, I think people are trying to do the best they can. So what are the U.S. efforts as far as you understand them? Who's in charge? Is it CDC? Um, I think the CDC is uh, the Department of Human Health Services, of course, cares a lot about this as well, but I think the CDC is in the front line of this. And what sorts of things should they be doing, are they doing? As far as you uh, can tell, are they taking the steps that needs to be taken? Well, you know, the, the, what they're doing now is making, trying to make sure that people come into the country uh, are free of the virus. That's about the best that... Um, you, know, you can do right now, I think. And then after that, if we start seeing cases here, you'll have to do figure out management of quarantining and identifying people who are uh, potentially contagious, uh, making sure that large mass gatherings, uh, and, and that could even include a school, doesn't become a place where virus can spread. This was illustrated on the cruise ships off of Japan, where putting everybody together for a period of time was a perfect setup for the virus spreading among people. Well, we also think of things, not just schools and public gatherings, but also things like uh, factories and businesses. Uh, there are some yeah. reports here that businesses are shutting down and telling people to go home and work at home. For example, a, current can a, a, a canary wharf over in London that happened with yesterday. So is that something we are prepared to do here in the United States? I think that one can't say at once ever prepared to do it until it happens, and then you have to be prepared to do it. So I think people could, should, probably could and should be thinking about those kinds of scenarios, because this is the way the virus will spread when you have a large group or numbers of people in close proximity, and one of them's infected, and you have a virus that spreads easily. That's the setup for infecting more people. It's just more practical, uh, it's practical sense rather than anything that's medical. As I said, I believe you've been studying coronaviruses of various sorts for almost 40 years now. Is there anything particularly out of the ordinary about this one? Does this one, so far at least, fit in with what you've seen before? Yeah, so that's a good question because before uh, 2003, we, we had cold coronaviruses, and those spread pretty similarly to this virus uh, in the sense that people were... Uh, they had a cold, and just like any other cold, they spread. It spreads easily, but no one really cared because it was an upper respiratory tract uh, mostly, and uh, cold spread. And then after that, when we had the SARS coronavirus and MERS coronavirus epidemics, that seemed to be viruses that were confined to the lower lungs, so they didn't care too much about the upper airways. The result was it was a bad virus. I, there's a lot of people got really sick with it, and 10% died in the case of SARS. But um, you weren't really contagious until you were sick. But this virus is a mix of the two, so it uses the same receptor for entry into cells as one of the upper airway viruses, and also that the SARS virus uh, uses in the lower airway. So you have a situation where um, I think probably most people get an upper airway kind of infection, maybe a cold-like uh, disease, maybe a little more than that, and then they'll be better. 
And then for other people, it goes into the base of their lungs, so they have more like the SARS uh, mm. kind of clinical disease that we saw uh, 15 years ago. So it's a mix of both.